Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to answer a, a viewer's question. The viewer has a Pen Fierce 2 that uh, has a skipping anti-reverse. It's not holding. Well, this of course is not the Pen um, Fierce 2. This is the Pen Battle 2. But they're similar in nature and I'm going to show you how to take off the anti-reverse clutch, how to clean it, and if it uh, still is skipping, how to replace it. So we'll use the Battle uh, battle 2 as an example, but this will work for the Pursuit. If you happen to have a, uh, a Pen Pursuit, it'll work for the Fierce and it will work for the Battle. They're all essentially the uh, same uh, internal designs. Uh, where they differ is in the um, drag system here. The, the Battle has the HT100 drags in it. The Fierce and Pursuit have uh, felt washers in this edition. They also uh, differ a little bit in the ball bearings. Uh, this one has an additional ball bearing on it. And they differ in the, um, the cases. Some are graphite and some are metal. But other than that, internally they're about the same and they share a lot of parts. So we're removing the, the uh, exterior parts. We took off the uh, spool and now we're taking off the handle. While we're doing that, I want to thank our first responders for all that they're doing to keep us safe during the pandemic. Yeah, I kind of thank them every day and I'm thankful that they're there every day to support us. And I really do appreciate everything it is that you do. Please take care of yourself and stay well. And of course, if we're not in that group of healthcare providers or first responders or the like, then uh, we want to make sure that we take care of ourselves, and that includes wearing the masks and uh, maintaining our social distancing and listen to our authorities. And of course, getting that ever-expanding line for a vaccine. I'm sure one of these days it will get around to us. So, all right, I took off the bump guard. I'm taking off the three side plate screws because we need to remove the axle shaft to get to that uh, anti-reverse collar. So if you're tuning up your, your battle reel at this point, you're going to do the same thing. There's no difference. The only difference probably is that uh, you won't actually clean or replace the, um, the AR clutch. So that AR clutch is a one-way clutch, and it's the subject of a lot of disappointment I think on a lot of folks' behalf because on this reel it only goes the one way and it doesn't have an override so what happens is you can't back pedal a fish to save your drags and to me from a frustration standpoint is every now and then you're going to get something that breaks on the reel uh, the cross wind block a tooth in the cross wind gear uh, something along that lines and it's going to get trapped behind that darn main gear and there's no way to reverse that to untrap it and you wind up either breaking the main gear or uh, having a, a, quite, a, quite an issue getting it off. All right, we took the three case screws out. That'll take our case off. Here's a bearing. And what we need to do is, is move the assembly down to the bottom so that we have access to the Phillips head screw that is uh, holding on the axle shaft so that we can remove that. So at this point it's a good time to tell you take pictures. If you don't uh, um, have the schematic or don't know the reel, take the pictures because it's going to help you to identify where the pieces and parts go from an orientation state, uh, standpoint when you go to repair it. You'll also know I'm wearing a protective glove and gee I should have wore a protective glove the other day. I uh, was kind of moving something and ran into a brick wall and scraped my hand up pretty good, but uh, don't worry, it's still working. And uh, I guess that's lessons learned, right? So uh, we're going to take the crosswind block off and pull the main gear out. You can't pull that main gear out unless you remove that axle shaft. That's because there's a drive on the back of this here, and the drive on the back of it is going to uh, interfere. That axle shaft is going to ride between the two. And as you try to pull that out, it's going to bump. So you need to remove that axle shaft first. All right, press my gear out. So all it is so far is the same, whether you're tuning up the reel or you're going to replace that anti-reverse um, clutch bearing. When you see like five to one, five and one for the bearings, that one is the anti-reverse clutch. 
think this is a 12 millimeter. I use this uh, Mitchell tool, but you don't need a Mitchell tool. You can use a 12 millimeter wrench. You can use a deep socket, uh, anything to grab that. And I just use it to make uh, start the nut getting unloose. And then once it does, I go for the uh, uh, removing the rest by hand. Okay, the rotor is off. And so now this is the assembly we're talking about when we're going to uh, remove that uh, anti-reverse clutch. There's three screws that hold it on. We're going to pull the three screws. And we'll be able to pull out the pinion gear, the two bearings, and the anti-reverse clutch, which apparently is giving our viewer the problem. So if you have questions like that, uh, how do I remove the, or how do I fix a, a reel that I can't get the anti-reverse to stay on, uh, leave them in the comment section. It doesn't have to be about this particular reel. And uh, I try to answer them, and, and the viewer was uh, asking could I do the video on it to, to show it step by step. So I said, I don't have a problem with that, particularly when I have the reel in the shop, and I have a, uh, an opportunity to answer that question with the video. I have the three screws and the collar, and I'm just going to leave them on my table. I'm not going to put them into my parts tray. And we should be able to just pull this out. We are. Okay, so the first part is a collar and a burring. Notice that the burring has a uh, seal on it. There's a little shim that goes on top of the burring. Don't lose the orientation on that. Next up is the collar that rides inside your anti-reverse. Comes out just like that. And then we have a smaller bearing below. And then we have our pinion shaft. So what's happening with this is as you spin forward, this is the orientation for the reel. Spinning forward, it runs freely. And when you go to stop, it grabs the collar. That's because there's a series of bearings inside here. Let's see if we just remove this. You can see the rollers in here, the spring driven. And a lot of times what's going to happen is grease or dirt or sand or junk or any of the, and all of the above are going to get lodged in here. You'll, you'll see there's a little travel space, kind of looks like a V. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but my point is in that. And um, there's a little travel space where that bearing will come in and release. And if that gets jammed with dirt, then it's going to uh, foul the performance on that anti-reverse. So if that's the case, the best thing to do is get yourself some penetrating oil and flush it. Just kind of give it a good spray, let it sit, do it several times over, flush it good. And sometimes if you, uh, if you do that, grab a, uh, a cotton swab, try to get all the dirt out of it. Sometimes that is enough to free it up. Now, generally speaking, Penetrating oil is not a good lubricating oil, but in this case, I would say you're fine with that. So this one is very clean. You can see that. And uh, this one's working fine. Notice the orientation on the anti-reverse bearing. You have a metal collar up on this side, and you have a plastic collar which contains those spring bearings underneath. That's the downside. If you put it this way, your reel's going to turn in reverse. You're going to try and spin it, and it's not going to spin. It's going to be locked up. It's going to be locked up because this is holding it as it should from uh, not moving in that anti-reverse situation. So turn it the right way. And then you have this collar. And this is the other one that uh, from time to time causes the, the anti-reverse to uh, foul or not perform properly. And that's because it'll grab sand and junk. And as those bearings try to grab this, it, it doesn't work. It slips, right? So get all the, uh, the greases and oils and dirt off of this. And uh, after, uh, after you've done that, if it's still fouled, if it's still not working properly, then what you want to do is replace the burring. And uh, without getting in any details like we just did with the cleaning of that burring, just simply take the burring and, and mount the collar inside of it, make sure the plastic side is down and then you can reassemble. Okay, speaking of reassembling, since we're doing this real uh, as, a, as a cleanup project as well, let's go ahead and make sure that all of the little tracks inside of the uh, pinion gear here are clean. I'm just using a little pick to do that. 
Again, you can use your, your, your spray here. You can use the towel and your finger fingernail to just kind of clean it out that way. You can see that there's a lot of dirt inside that track. It's all the old grease. You want to get that grease out of there and uh, make sure it's clean. And then you want to reapply grease. So I'm going to use a pen grease for this. I'm going to use pen precision real grease. And we're going to uh, use a, I use an artist brush. You don't need to use an artist brush, but I do. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and Get a nice coating of grease on there. I'm also going to put a little bit on the shaft where those bearings ride just to uh, keep them lubricated. If we were paying attention, we have a next up is that uh, collar. And there's a small uh, copper shield that goes first. Then the bearing. Then we have our anti-reverse. These bearings are sealed, so you don't need to do anything with those. Notice that there's flat sides on the pinion gear. You don't need to line up the collar of the anti-reverse gear with that. Make sure that it's spinning and make sure it holds. So just try and turn it backwards clockwise. And if it's not holding, then you didn't clean it enough or it's, it's uh, fouled to the point where it's not going to operate properly. Okay, we have a bearing inside of here. So I'm just going to poke that out for a moment. Notice that there's a wide side and a narrow side to this carrier. And all you want to do is clean that up. Again, we have a sealed bearing here, so you don't need to do anything with the sealed bearing. Just reinstall. That goes on top of the assembly with the wide side down. And then there's a little plastic, uh, little metal shield here, which is what the rotor is going to ride on. Make sure that that's done properly. Once that's seated, make sure you're clean inside here. Cleaning is, is about half of the real service, if, unless something's broken. Almost all the time, it's been a while since the reel was cleaned, and you just want to make sure that you take your time and you clean it up before you put it back into service. Dirt is the enemy of a reel. And if uh, you have old dirty grease, and you can see there's, there's some dirt in that grease there. And there's some grease that's discolored, which means it's been in there a while. So just clean it up, make sure that it's not coagulated or anything. Take your assembly. There's um, little ridges there, and there's ridges inside here, so you need to make sure that the ridges seat properly. Take your little collar. And your three small screws. And those of you that know me, it's those small screws are probably going for coffee right now. That's okay. It takes me a little while to get these things seated properly. switch to a micro driver they came out easy enough but they're having a little bit of trouble going in. Now Penn puts a, a blue Loctite on these and I guess if you wanted to reseat that with the Loctite uh, you could. I have a problem with Loctite in that sometimes it locks it too tight and a piece breaks off and then you're in trouble with the reel. But if you want to use Loctite to help against boat vibration or the like, you, you can certainly do that. All right, we got one down. We got one that's not quite going in the way it should. We'll come back to that. Don't force anything in terms of the screws. They, they pretty much have the one path and the one path only. So if you, uh, if you find that you're having trouble tightening it up, chances are it's not going in square. Back it off and do it again. And that often happens with that first screw because you're trying to line up the collar with the hole and all that other stuff. So just take your time. Patience is important when you're doing real repair. All right, that's the third one. Now it's going in easy enough. And use a paper towel just to clean that extra grease off from underneath. 
I'll check this side. We have a little bit of dirt in that under here, so we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Clean out that cavity. I put a drop of oil on the uh, internal trip lever for the, the bale using Realex, which is an aftermarket product. Put a little bit on the ball bearing on the line carrier and put a little bit in the seams. You don't need to take a bale off to service the bale. Just work it in. Go ahead and put that back on. Same idea here. We got a square side. And what I like about the this particular pen reel is it's got a cap washer on it, so you can't over tighten the uh, the top. Sometimes people will over tighten it, and then the rotor doesn't spin, and they can't understand why. And truth be known, it was just totally over tightened. But in this case, look at that! Isn't that a beautiful spinning reel? Okay, so if you were replacing your uh, your axle shaft, you now know how to do that. Um, I said axle shaft, that's because it's in my hand. If you were replacing your anti-reverse clutch, that's how you do this. This is also how you do your replacement of your axle shaft, if you're, if you're there. Although that wasn't the request in the video. All right, this is the tie-down screw for the, the hold fast. Let's go ahead and put that in. And then we'll just clean and reassemble the bottom and your pen 3000 will be about 3002. Ready to go again. All right, your main gear, I'm going to take the bearing off. Just had a question on that as I took it off. Uh, somebody asked, uh, what, what's the sequence of the, um, the two small washers and the bearing? I'll show you in a moment. Just reminded me. If you uh, didn't take pictures, or if you weren't paying attention and you found yourself with a bearing in a couple of small washers that you didn't know where to go. Uh, you could go to the schematic and find it. I guess you could also ask Dennis in the comments. But uh, that's why I recommend taking pictures because a lot of things come off a reel in a hurry. And if you're not paying attention, uh, things can get a little, little crazy. All right, I've cleaned it. I've checked the teeth. All the teeth were in nice condition. I've checked the uh, back end of the uh, gear, which is going to drive the oscillating oscillating gear or crosswind gear, whatever you want to call it. Did notice that one of the hairs from the brush just got stuck in there. So one downside of using those uh, those brushes. Some people have told me to go use the uh, acid brushes from uh, solder and the like. Um, I guess I just pay attention. The brush is comfortable in my hand. I pay attention. I use the, the brush, but every now and then it does lose a hair. All right. We're going to make sure that we have grease around the collar or the stud where it's going. We already greased the, the pinion gear. When you put your crosswind block or crosswind gear in, set the stud to the bottom. That makes it easier to, uh, to mount. And remember how we took this block off. We moved it all the way down to the bottom. So you're going to need to do that. Now, now we can get ourselves set up here. I'm going to clean out the slot, so I want to get the slot greased. That slot is where your crosswind block is going to go over the stud. And it's going to ride in it. So we have that set properly now. So you can see it's riding on the stud now. Now you, now you want to put your gear in. Now, if that wasn't a sealed bearing, you could go ahead and put oil on that. I'm going to put the main gear in. On the axle shaft, you want to make sure it's clean. Go ahead and put a light coat of grease onto that. Don't put a lot on. It's only going to get squeezed out when it goes through the, the axle shaft there. This is the difference between the Fierce and the Pursuit and the Battle. It's got an extra bearing on the axle shaft there. It also has the HD100s as drag washers in there. Go ahead and line the hole on the axle shaft with the hole in the crosswind block. Here it is. I was looking at my parts tray and pulled the wrong screw out. This is your screw for your axle shaft. Get that set. 
And then the question on the where do the shim washers go? The shim washers go to the inside. In this case, there's three of them. Those are used to, to uh, properly align the gear with uh, the main gear with the pinion gear. There's always some play in it, and that's usually set at the factory. So put that in next. Then the bearing, which is going to be covered by the side plate. Make sure your side plate is clean. And so, if you like this kind of thing, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, and if you subscribe, please hit notifications. That way you won't miss any of the episodes that I, that I post. And I've been trying to post daily because of the, uh, the pandemic. I know some people actually use this to escape the kind of the cruel reality of what's going on out there. So uh, if you do, hit the notifications button. That way you'll see the types of reels I'm working on. I work on everything. I work on whatever comes in my shop. I mentioned already, you can ask me questions, leave those in the comments. Uh, I also do real repair by mail, so if you have a reel that needs service, just like this, it's not broken, just time for an annual service. Or if uh, you have one that is broken and uh, it needs a repair, uh, contact me on my email and a business card that follows. And I'll be happy to provide you with that repair information. So we're just tightening up the three case screws now. And then we'll be able to reattach. We'll go up top. I'll show you the drag system. And uh, then you'll know how the Pen Battle 2 3000 comes together, how to maintain it if you have one of them, what to look for if you're buying one of them. So we've already pointed out some of the differences between the Battle and the Fierce and the Pursuit. And uh, You'll, have, you'll be an educated consumer if you decide to buy one or two or all of them. All right, so we just put the bump guard on. We're putting the hold down screw for the bump guard on. Put the handle on. And we'll see how it all turns. I'm sure it's going to turn very nicely. It's all been oiled up, greased, and it's ready to go. All right, so up top then it says HT100 on it. The HT100 is a carbon fiber kind of a drag system. It's held in by a spring. I use a little pick to get it out. Follow the spring around, find out where the, the meat, and then go to the nearest slot to, to remove that spring. It is a spring, so please be careful, it will shoot. Okay, now we should have three and three in here, I believe. We do. Just make sure it's cleaned inside top drag system takes an awful lot of water from the water being thrown off the line as it goes onto the spool. So a lot of times it'll it'll seat itself into the washer. So you want to make sure that you're, you're cleaned with that. We have two HT100s and we have two metal washers. That's the way that this drag sack is set. So the first one in then is a composite washer. This one's got plenty of grease on it. You don't need to grease them. Second one is the round washer or keyed washer. These are acting as eared washers because they have the points on them. They go in the slots of the uh, spool. And then we go up top with that one. Come back and take our spring. I like to put one side of the spring in and kind of work myself around to get it in. Make sure it rides in the ridge. These. The spring doesn't serve any purpose other than holding those washers in place. So if you lost your spring, you can still take your real fishing. Just understand when it's time to go service your drags or, or take your spool off that the washers may fall out. I'm just working into the slot there. Okay, we're good. Just simply reinstall that. Got some line on here that doesn't want to play nice. So we can't put that into the tie down here. Kind of hard to do this with a glove on, but there you go. So normally I would recommend that you change your line when you go to get your reel serviced. It's just a good practice. The line does get uh, tired. If it's monofilament, it's subject to UV, and uh, all lines are subject to stretching. 
and uh, braid is, is subject to fraying. So just uh, take the time, if you're servicing your reel, take the time to make sure that you change your line as well. All right, well, I guess I didn't get that in a hole now. So here we go, there it is. That's the Pen Battle 3000. We took a little bit extra time to show you how to service that uh, anti-reverse clutch, and this one certainly is working. And uh, this is a nice reel overall. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. Again, thank you to all who have subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd ask you to go ahead and do that. It's what keeps my channel vibrant. And most importantly, please stay safe, stay well, stay, uh, stay aware of everything that's going on in a pandemic. pandemic and uh, thank you to all. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.